in Chicago, just outside Chicago. Let's see what he can do. Lines up. Nitro Express. Brand new sponsor. Megan Swart Racing Starters. And there he goes. Up in the air. Goes a mark of blood right through the press. And he makes it all the way through. Nitro Express. Play Langley. A beautiful run for Langley. And a 32 Austin Banner. He had no problems at all. Look at him launch off the line. The front wheels come up. He's trying to play it through. 4.72 seconds for Langley. And the Nitro Express. He's got it. Margo, you will not see, I flat guarantee, a more bizarre machine, but he had a few problems just two weeks ago. This rear engine car, car rolled two weeks ago, flipped three times, and then he came back with the next pass and won the event. We're talking about a serious competitor who wants to win. 1978 Subaru Brad, and here we go, and look at the fire come out of those lights! He gets sideways! It looks like the film was sped up, it was not, but it was him getting sideways! Ken Crum of Kansas City is a spoiled brat. And the crowd loves it. Let's take another look. Now watch him get completely, almost completely sideways. There he is. Heads for the, for the off the track, almost. A 3.31 second clocking for the brat. The Great White Hope, 1927 Ford Roadster, running a Chevy 548 engine with alcohol injected with nitrous oxide. Boy, it don't get more potent than that. It only weighs 2,000 pounds. It puts out well over 1,400 horsepower. It is a monster. Earlier, we talked to the man who drives this machine. From South Bend, Indiana. Mike, you do this professionally, right? Yes, I do, Larry. I travel all over the United States. Uh, try to race every weekend. Sometimes you got a week off or two. Uh, How did you get into it? Well, I've always had a four-wheel drive uh, street vehicle, and one day I went to a, a local outdoor mud race, and I seen the guys running their cars and trucks in the mud, and I thought, this is ridiculous, this is crazy. Uh, I had a lot of money in my truck, it's a nice-looking street vehicle, and uh, someone come up to me and said, well, why don't you try that? And I, I said, you're crazy, I've never run my truck through a big hole of mud like that. And the next race there I was with my truck running it. And, and what do you like about it? Uh, I like the traveling. You, you meet a lot of great people. You, you see the country. Uh, it's, it's not the same monotonous job every week. And uh, I really love it. A 1927 Ford Roadster with a big block 548 cubic inch Chevy running alcohol injected with nitrous oxide. Ladies and gentlemen, it don't get more potent than this. Weighing only 2,000 pounds. Putting out well over 12, 1,400 horsepower. Let's see what young Mike Fair can do. He started out as doing this only for a hobby, but it just wasn't enough. Now it's a full-time job. The crowd leaning forward. There is the flagman setting him up. We'll wave it, and whenever Fair wants to start, he will. And the crowd is ready for this one. And there he goes. And he goes the line. He's watching himself through in seconds. Slams on the brakes. The crowd responding, let's get the clocking for fair. There is no safety net. Normally we have a safety net, we couldn't hook it up this time. No place to hook it, and there's fair as he rocks and rolls through it in 2.47 seconds. Whoa! This is an 85 Jeep Scrambler powered by a big block Chrysler. Mark Payton, the owner-driver out of Vandalia, Ohio, Ram Bunches. Comes from a long line of racers. His dad used to be a drag racer, now works on Mark's pit crew, and he's the tutor, he says. Mark says he only drives. 2,900 pounds. Ram Bunches. Here he goes. Mark is off the line and rocks and rolls and bounces, and he's through it. All the way through it in seconds. I think that's quite a tutor. Let me tell you, this kid got off the line of perfect launch and rocket through the traps. Let's take another look at it. There it is, all four wheels spewing the mud. But getting a little bit sideways, and he gets through it 2.9 seconds. That's good for second place for Ram Bunches. An 86 Jeep CJ7 with a big block Chevy, alcohol injected on nitrous oxide. This is insanity. And that's what his mother used to say. She said it was insanity to do anything like this. And Jeff Acker's on the line, ladies and gentlemen. The start line. We are ready to go. 
and he's got one of those high-tech frames that you can actually adjust the angle of the frame, therefore affecting the way the motor gets that power to the rear wheels. And actually, all four wheels, Marco, four-wheel drive, Jeep CJ7. And there he goes, off the line, and hold on, Baba! Whoa, he slams on the fighters and goes right into the hay bale. And listen to this crowd, they love it! Insanity, Acker was barely touching the ground all the way through that run, and the clacking. A 2.50 puts him in strongly in the second place for insanity. He is a window maker at Acker Millwork. Jeff Acker of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Another luck. Look at this guy. A perfect run. Gets up on top of the bun and goes for it. Bouncing, rocking. The rear wheels locked up to try to slow it down. Before it hits the wall. Second place for insanity. United States Hot Rod Association brings you the ultimate home video. Blood, sweat, and gears. Bigfoot takes on the toughest full-blown competition ever. But then he faces his greatest test. It's man versus machine in his battle battalion challenge. This is Mr. Bullslinger, a 1932 Ford five-window coupe with a big bore Ford engine, 466 nitrous injection that comes on only at full throttle. When he floorboards the throttle, that's when the nitrous kicks in, which is kind of dangerous, Margo Kane. That's right, but he says he's addicted to racing. It's worse than a drug habit because it's legal. Well, as far as I'm concerned, Larry, the only thing you can stop it is a wife. Off the line, there he goes down the, through, all the way through the 80-foot mud pit. No problems at all for Mr. Ballslinger. Rockets right through it. Boy, he just flat got it on. Look at his start. A beautiful start, no problems, a little bit of up and down motion, a 3.22 second clocking. I believe that will put him in about fifth place. One of the prettiest machines out here. Here's a 1986 Chevy S10. It's called Troublemaker out of Lombard, Illinois. Phil Floro, the driver, and there he goes. And he launches it beautifully for a big, big Chevy car. And makes it through, slams on the binder. Troublemaker, Phil Floro. Alcohol injected big block Chevy. But it's cut way down on weight, 2,600 pounds, and he makes it through with 303 seconds on the clock. And here he goes again. It's deceptive, Margo. It looks a lot heavier than it is. And this is one time when the driver has earned the name of the truck. His wives and his girlfriends, his wives and his girlfriends, well, that's what he said. <laughs> he says that. He tr causes trouble for everybody so and they everything. Call him the troublemaker. I think he just called, caused trouble for him. The mud shark, and this is different. We talked earlier with the driver and uh, talked about the problems he was having with handling. From Walkerton, Indiana, Mike, the mud shark looks like it might be a little difficult to hold on to. The track was pretty rough out there uh, this afternoon. Uh, in practice. I'm hoping it will be a little smoother here. Uh, How did you get into mud bog racing? We started out, uh, we wrecked the four-wheel drive street truck and decided that was the next step to go, was to build a race vehicle. Why a Corvette? My dad and I are Corvette fanatics. He's a drag racer. Uh, we've been with Corvettes for quite a few years now. Don't take your eyes off the screen for this one. Mud Shark. He's had problems with handling. It's got too much horsepower. 2,000 horsepower. 64 Chevy Corvette body. 2,500 pounds. Capable of over 200 miles an hour. If he were geared high enough, this thing has got the power. But he also has problems with the handling. So watch Mike Early and the Mud Shark out of Walkerton, Indiana, 27 years old. The starting gate is important. He's staging. He's being real selective on what line he's choosing. He's got to be Margo King, 454 blown with alcohol injected Chevy engine. A Corvette body, and here he goes. Watch out. And he gets through it. All of them. And he almost throws it. Holy Toledo gets completely up in the air. I want to see that.
The front wheel comes up, the back wheel comes out, he almost throws it. Notice his head slams into the roll bar, and he stays alert and alive. Holy Toledo. He has not cured his handling problem. Oh, I'm telling you. That is a neat coupon ride, Margot King. Checking to see if he's got his pilot's license. Look at the look on his face. Talk about stunned. <laughs> Mike is stunned. And I hope he gets the handling problems worked out, but until he does, it makes for an incredible show. You gotta love it. Final truck, final vehicle coming up. This guy is really upset. He's a spectator, and he got mud in his eye while he's sitting in the stands, and he's go ready to go down and attack the mud shark. If he didn't want a good 30, he should be at the Holiday Inn. I don't believe him. He is just absolutely irate. He, he's, now he's happy. He sees the camera, <laughs> and he's happy. Hi, Mom. All I'm right. Sorry. I've got mud in my eye, Mom. I think he's yelling for it. I don't think he likes Chevy. I think that's the problem. <laughs> the final machine of the unlimited cut tire class, Mudbuster, Mark Green, Joaquin in the line. A 79 Jeep CJ5 with a big block Chevy, and here he goes. He gets sideways, halfway through it, knocks over the, the finish line, pulls, and slams on the binders. Whoa, Nelly! Mark Green, and look at the crowd. They love him. A CJ5 with a big block Chevy. Here he comes off the line, gets sideways, right in the first 20 feet, takes out the start in the finish line gate, and slams on the binders. 2.78 second blocking for the Mudbuster. Patrol takes the victory with a 2.28 second clocking. Second, a hundredth of a second behind him, Mud Shark, that radical Corvette, 2.29. In third, Learning to Fly, 2.46. In fourth, The Great White Hope, 2.47.